Hello, Joshua Delisle, designer blacksmith here, and today I'm going to give you my first official lesson into forging. And today we're going to forge one of these. It's a penny end scroll. Traditional ironwork. A lot of ironwork has penny end scrolls or scrolls in general because they're the excellent space fillers on ornamental gates or railings. And the scroll work makes a most efficient way of utilising that space with least amount of material possible. And we like to decorate the ends of these scrolls using various different methods, uh, but in this case we're calling it a penny end, because the end is shaped like a penny. So why would an artist blacksmith like myself be wanting to do traditional stuff like this? Well, this is measurable. Every process involved with making this is a process that I can use to make anything else, such as my stags, for example. In fact, I'm going to show you a clip right now on something very similar. In that clip you've just watched, you would have seen something that looks very similar to this, which is also the part of making this, the penny end scroll. So there are a number of techniques. We're forging to section, we're creating a, a twist and forging that twist out to create this transition of material. We're doing some bending work and we're going to go over some of the problems that you might encounter. So why would I not do this because it makes this kind of effect? So stick around for that in the video. Please, if you do find this video quite helpful or there's lots of things that you're unsure about or want to point out, please do leave comments. If you like it, please like it. And also, uh, if you feel like it's worth sharing, that would help me also because uh, the more, more people I can get to watch my videos, then the more chances I'm going to be able to make better ones and, and good ones. So uh, that's really helpful to me. So thank you, and uh, let's get forging, shall we? Okay, so the stock we're going to use is 120 millimetres long of 6 millimetres by 20 millimetres. So 20 by 6 by 120. And you need to make sure that your tongs fit the steel and, you know, absolutely don't move. So when forging the penny end, we want to have a, a metal on the end to create a complete circle. So to make a circle, we first need a complete square. So if this steel is 20 millimeters wide, we now need to make a little mark 20 millimeters down. And that is gonna be our square. We want to leave if this is six millimetres in thickness, then we will need to have it shouldered down to about six millimetres here also. There we go. Now, what we can do is centre dot that, if, uh, if that makes it accurate for you to do it, for you to see. We can make a centre dot mark on the side and to centre dot mark on the inside of our scribe line of where we're going to set it down to. Okay? So let's say you were doing a production of these and you hadn't got time to mark every single one. Another way of doing it is you could create a backstop here, so you push it there until it came to 20 millimetres, then forge the step down, move it to somewhere where you've got a lot more room. Another way is if you know that is 120 mil long, to mark it on the anvil. So that is 100 to there. So now I know, if I hold it in my tongs, and I place my metal, it's exactly that height that I am definitely on that line. And now I can start to forge my set down. Right, let's forge the first part, the set down. So to forge the set down, we're going half on, half off. 
like this. And ultimately, that end part needs to be square. That's what you're aiming for. It starts to buckle, or twist, flatten it on the face of the anvil. A key note is you're going to get some swelling in the neck here. Now that's okay, we want a little bit of swelling and I'll explain why in a second. So don't be worried about forging that neck back to being six millimeters. We want some extra thickness in there for when we twist and forge that twist in, which you'll see in a second. You'll notice that I've tapered this back. So going half on half off, I'm lifting my tongs at a slight angle and creating a taper. We want a 50 millimeter long taper. So the best way we can do that, to mark on the anvil, 50 millimetres. So if we mark it from the edge, with our bit of chalk, 50 millimetres, we can label it, so taper. Let's see how much more we have to forge. So, there's still quite a bit to forge back to this taper. So I'm going to do that on my next heat. Get the scale off, give it a clean. Right, now we've got a point to work to, we can work the taper back. Now we've got a lot of extra thickness there, so we don't want to come back too much. I'm leaving a bit of thickness in that shoulder. And that shoulder we want to be square. So if it's thick this side, keep it thick that side in the same way. And now we're just going to work on that shoulder a little bit, so I want it to be like a square box on the end of it. And it's that square box alone that we're going to twist. So this part here, just from there to there, no more than six mil itself to be completely square. So I'm going to just true up my hammer. Come down like that. See? But now we have, from there to there, a cube. From there to that cube, from there to that cube. And that is over six millimeters. That's going on for eight millimeters. And that is the part that we're going to twist. Okay, so a possible way we can get rid of cracks happening. First of all, when you've done your set down, do it on a rounded edge, not a sharp edge. And now we can just take off those corners like this, just where we want to bend it. like that. Le there are less harsh corners in there now for when we do the twist. In fact it should be even easier to twist it when we get there. So let's have a go at twisting that now we've knocked the corners off and see how we go. And notice we've left extra metal. Do it whilst it's nice and hot. About a 90 degree angle. Now it's a much softer twist. There aren't harsh corners. And when we forge that down, we should be absolutely crack free. Let's give it a brush. Let's see how we go.
still a slight one on this side. I maybe could have forged a bit more of a, um, a hexagon in there to forge it down. The main thing is it's just in here. I don't want any cracks forming. And that's looking pretty good. So another thing we can learn, how do we straighten this part up now it's bent at an angle? Because this is meant to be central. So let's have a look at how we can correct that. So his hips out is what I like to say. So to keep that nice corner in there, I'm going to hit it here, but on the corner, at that angle, but on this corner. Into the hardy hole. Has it straightened it? Not quite yet. Now we can straighten this profile after it's been bent. I've knocked him too far the other side now. So let's do the skin. I can also hit it on the flat here as well. Here and here. But not on the corner itself. And straighten it up. Are you seeing that? So that's a bit more true now. That's kind of the profile we want. It's central. So all I need to do is make that square and then to round. Okay, so to true that face up, I'm just going to upset it in this way. <coughs> And we want to hit that corner off and run on it this way. True the face up. We're getting more square, not perfect. It's slightly rectangular, so I want to forge it back this way again. key thing to remember is the more you're putting this in the fire, the more you're working this, you're going to weaken this shoulder. Ideally, you could have a slight radius on your anvil, so that it is in a corner, which can create a crack. square. Now I'm going to work on these corners. So I'm going to put it so the corners are directly in line and come straight down. Okay. No, it wasn't quite straight down enough. So. You see what's beginning to happen. You're beginning to get a circle. So the idea is you knock the corners off to create flats, and then you knock those corners off and keep knocking the corners off until you get nice rounded edges. Okay, so got nice corners, knock those corners off, turn it, knock these corners off. Remember you're always coming straight down. Now it's looking like a little eye shape or a little bird with a beak. So now we want to round off this beak area, but we also want this transition to go more smoothly in. So what we're going to do is knock this back so the beak is pointing straight up. And then we're going to go down flat onto it and then start to round that up. And what that will do is work a nice transition into this back corner here also. So we're going to knock him back until he's pointing straight up, then we're going to come straight down. Looking at the profile, 
Are we in line? Okay. So can you now see? Okay. So can you now see how this um, profile comes all the way and then really tucks in here like a real penny end? If we didn't do what I've just done, then that would be flat down there, going that way. And we don't want that. We want it to look like a real spiralling penny end. So now it is a case of forming that scroll. So now we've formed the penny end, we need to scroll it up. So I've got the drawing, I want it to look like that scroll just there. So I'm going to use that for reference. And I'm going to take just glancing blows like this, edging it forward ever so slightly. So we've got a bit of a right angle. See there's a bit of a flat there. If I hold it in this position, it's gonna bend, take that kink right out. See? Did you see the hammering that was doing there? If it was bent over that way, I would place it to lift it up. And when I hit there, it knocks the penny end back. And so, you know, you're, you're going to rotate around the anvil and hit it in different ways to get that penny to go straight and true how you'd like it to be. I think that's pretty good now. So things like that little kink there, you could just take a file to. We could open out just very slightly. Just for example, put the pliers in there, just open that out. Have such a touch. That's better. It's got a better transition now. So the problems you're going to get is cracking here from overworking or uh, too sharp a corners on your anvil. Uh, another one is misshaping of the penny end itself and how to correct bends when we get into it. Okay, so let's go over what we've just learned. So we've got 120 millimeters of six by 20 and we've marked on the anvil or we've marked on the steel 20 mil and we've set it down until we've gotten to this stage so there's our set down we've also knocked the corners off and we've made it square so that part in the center is square and we've done it so it's the same thickness all the way around and it's about eight millimeters which is thicker than the rest of the steel once we've knocked those corners off, we're then able to twist it. So we've twisted it 90 degrees. After we've twisted it, we've then forged the taper to the correct dimensions and forged, um, forged out the twist so it's a nice 90 degree angle head. But we need to work, work out, um, we need to now square the head off. So in this one you can see it's absolutely perfectly square to get to the next stage. So to get to this stage, we need to knock the corners off. So 90 degrees, well, actually that'd be 45 degrees, but getting so the corners are absolutely parallel, and forging those flat until you're getting your, till it's flat by 20 millimeters. So if I can explain this part here, is 20 
it's a 20 millimeter round ball end. So when we're when we're forging those parts flat, the profile here, you want to forge it to about 20 millimeters, then knock the corners off until that is completely rounded. After we've done that, we then want to kink it back up so that this top edge and the bottom of the, uh, the neck are completely in line and then we forge those down. Again, we're watching the dimensions and we're looking at the profile. You've got to be ever so careful not to over forge this part at this, at this point because if these bulge out too wide then uh, you're not going to be able to get your hammers in this corner to strain it up again. So a lot of care needs to be considered at this stage until you end up with a fairly round uh, penny end to the dimensions and you're, you're going to clean up all your forging maybe knock some of the corners off and then we're going to bend it on the edge of the anvil until it's a profile of our drawing should fit there and sleep yeah beautiful Set the timer. The go. Okay, so about seven minutes that took me to do this. This is the first one that I took my time on. So you'll notice that I did burn it ever so slightly. And there was a slight crack. And that is because the shoulder of the, that I, when I forged it, I used an edge that was just too sharp. So when I put the twist in, it wanted to shear. So that's a good thing to remember. The penny end in shape is slightly off, there's a bit of a bulge here that was very difficult to forge in once I forged this part. You, know, when, you remember when we twisted it to forge this part down to create that, that transition, well it's very hard to then get into here and here to forge those parts after. So you want to get those nice and crisp before you work on these sides because you're not going to be able to work on them very much. So thank you for watching. I hope that was really helpful and that you all know how to make a penny end scroll now. Please do leave some comments uh, and give me some feedback on how well you thought I was teaching because I want to improve my teaching skills. Um, if you think there's a better way or something that I'm doing wrong, then that would be also a good, um, a good thing to talk about also. So thank you very much for watching and uh, happy forging, a life worth living. See you later. Bye bye.